Okay. So, any doubts until now? Just raise your hand and the moderators will uh, probably like give you an opportunity to ask. Okay, I am assuming that all of you are done by this point and you have obviously tried the extrude, the revolve and both the sweeps by this point and you have an idea of how to, uh, to, to, to get to some shapes that you probably desire to make in this fashion. Well, we will see uh, two more or uh, let's say yeah just one more tool one more command on how to make uh, uh, surfaces from curves this one is slightly special it's called as loft and it's uh, it's a way of making surfaces on uh, curves which are piled on top of each other or are in a certain direction or in whichever way so we saw a way to make a uh, a surface by moving the curve in a direction by revolving the curve around an axis then we also saw how to make a surface by moving a cross section on a curve on a rail and then we also saw uh, on how it would go on two rails so yes but now we're going to see how to make uh, surfaces on curves that are sort of piled on top of each other. So let's imagine that there's a curve here, there's a curve here, there's a curve somewhere there. So how to make surfaces that go through all of these curves, okay? The command is simple. It's called as, uh, 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 it's called as loft, but for that we will need some groundwork. We will need to make some, some curves. So I've started with a curve here. I'm gonna make a few more curves. Before that, I'm just gonna make, like to make these good curves, I'm just gonna start with a circle and then rebuild the circle to whatever and then manipulate some of the points. So here what I'm, I'm doing is, I'm just selecting the control points and then scaling them, scaling the whole thing by using the gumball and that's how I get this shape. 
also uh, sorry now i'm just going to move this up a little bit i'm just going to move the other guy as in copy the other guy here and probably just to rotate it so i'm just doing a random exercise it's just the it's just like i'm doing this with no purpose but the idea is to get curves piled on top of each other uh, so yeah this is the combination of the curves that i have now what i was saying is we are going to make a surface that goes that follows all these curves like for example revolve can give you something that is uh, uh that is rotated around an axis so there's going to be a certain symmetry in that shape what we are doing with sweep and what we are doing with the loft is achieving some shapes which do not have that intrinsic uh symmetry that we are so familiar with so this is the way to make loft so i have the curves now i'm going to type the loft command loft l o f t and i hit space now it says select curves to loft now the key to making loft is to select the curves in the order that you want to loft them so for example i want to loft it from this curve to this curve so i'm going to select them in that order also i'm going to make sure that i select the curves at roughly the same direction like the same point on on the canvas roughly so like this is the first curve second curve third curve and fourth curve i've made the selections now i'm going to hit enter or space so now you see this weird little line like a polyline with some fancy arrows on it and the dialog box the, the sorry the command prompt it tells me that drag seam point to adjust now what exactly is this seam you might remember we were speaking about this yesterday that we will discuss it when we see the right uh, opportunity so yeah i think now is the time to discuss what a seam is so i'm going to show you an object and i'm going to tell you roughly how it was made well this is uh, something like a vase and uh, it's made out of glass but if it was made out of steel how you would do it is you will have a sheet of steel uh, of of uh, yeah a steel sheet and then you would roll it and you would weld the edges the edge will always remain visible no matter how much you buff it you paint on top of it and you sand blast it no matter what you do you will see the seam and thus the the object is going to be slightly weak around that seam around that little edge the welded edge the seam is the same seam that we are talking about here in rhino the way rhino makes these objects is a slightly similar way of making them physically so this is the seam which is where all the surfaces are sort of connected and they are stitched so it's asking you if you want the seam to be like this well we want the seam to be like this uh that is it has to be straight if the seam is twisted the object will be twisted as well we will see how that happens uh another thing that it's asking is not just the uh, uh location of the points but also the direction of of the points well this is different i mean directions are not associated to points we know that points only have coordinates uh but here we have directions what this means is your seam can go in the opposite direction and can make a hole in it it can tear a hole in that geometry so basically as in to speak uh, in a slightly mathematical sort of way i would say that this is related also to topology so in topology you have surfaces and holes well this is a way to make holes in those surfaces so now only thing that you need to worry about here at this stage is all the directions are aligned in the same way 
that is they are either clockwise or anti-clockwise so that is taken care of here in this case if you want to flip some directions all you need to do like in your case probably the directions are not aligned all you need to do is click on the white arrow just click and it goes to the opposite direction so now in this case it has gone in the other direction and this is not what we want so i am clicking on it again so now they are aligned if you see that some of the points are not aligned properly you could click on them and just move around don't drag you don't have to drag just click and then just move your mouse and the point will move with it so these are more or less aligned i would say i'm still going to get the visual geometry sort of right so yeah as you can see here they are not so aligned so i'm just going to make this line as straight as i can i mean you don't have to make it exactly on the z like it 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 might not be true for all uh, for all cases so yeah now oh i have just messed it all up so i'm just going to take it here and just Plonk it there. This one goes and goes there. This one probably goes there. Yeah. Okay. So we have it more or less the same. And now I'm done. Now let's hit enter. And now we have the shape. Okay. So there is the geometry, which is not at all symmetrical. It has some, some weird bump over here. But we'll see. Because... We are still not done. The, the surface, the loft is not made yet. There are still some options to choose from. So now it asks for what style do you want? So by style, it's a, it has a lot of styles. So normal looks like this. Loose is when it is following the curves that you gave it, but it just loosely makes a surface on it. It's like a floppy balloon kind of surface. But then if you say tight, it's going to restrict to all the, the curves, all the surfaces. You can also say, let it have straight sections, which means it's just plonk, plonk, plonk. It will go exactly as the curves and it will not follow the dynamics of the curves. And the last one is it should be uniform. So generally, I would suggest you to go for the uniform. Uh, in some cases, you might have to go for the tight style because probably this geometry is fitting into something is is uh, I I don't know it's it's sort of it's probably a bottle cap or it's probably something that goes inside another pipe I don't know it could be anything so you might have to choose between these two the tight or the uniform uh, another option is to close the loft. Well, now what we did was we started with one, two, three, and four. But then if we say close, the four goes back to one. And it creates these kind of weird intersecting surfaces. Well, in this case, it doesn't work because it goes inside. And then as you can see here, it goes out and then it goes back to one. We don't want that. You might need it in some case, but not here. Also, split at tangents this is a similar uh, concept where if you have kinks it will split at this point we don't want that uh, also uh, the the same um, options of you know the the tolerances that you want it to simplify or not if you say do not simplify it's just the uniform is of no use so like we said uniform but then we say do not simplify it's like counterintuitive then you want to rebuild it with more points so let's say if we rebuild it with 50 points all of my curves all the curves that we had in the beginning are going to have 50 control points and then it's going to be slightly more uniform more smooth and such or if you want to refit it to a certain tolerance level so i'm going to say this time i'm going to say rebuild it with uh, 50 or even 100 control points and now my surface is done and I'm going to hit OK. And there it is. So 
you can go ahead and start making this because this is a command which uh, needs some direct understanding. So I would suggest you to go ahead, make these curves. Also, when you're making the, the closed curves, uh, keep in mind that all of them have roughly the same number of control points. If you don't, then you might see some weird little uh, anomalies in your surfaces. So while you're making that, I am going to show an example where things might go wrong, where you might not adjust the seams in the right way. So it's the same curves and I'm going to do this. Okay, I'm assuming you guys are done with the lost command and uh, if you see on the screen i have made some ways in which the loft could go wrong uh, so the first one is the one that was done perfectly the second one i had the seam messed up so like the seam is not aligned it's just going in different direction uh, not directions but it's just uh, uh it's just not aligned it's not in straight line it's just like a polyline a weird polyline that's uh, which is why the loft is now twisted because the seam is not uniform the seam is not uniform it is like like so so it's it's not connected at the same line it has to go in a weird way so that's what happens if you don't align the scene properly? Uh, this is a very peculiar case. Sometimes happens with the best of us that you don't select the curves in the right order. So like here I have chosen the first one and then the third and then the second and then the fourth. So which is why it has made a surface like this. Well, the knowledge of uh, or the understanding that it might go like this, it can help you in some ways as well. Like. For example, probably you want this kind of a shape. 
so this is what you would do in that case like you want a, a certain uh, opening with a little notch on it while it goes inside and then goes out and you might think ah i'm going to make a curve and then i'm going to say sweep and then probably it will come out right well no probably you have the cross sections and you just uh, understand in which order you're going to select it to make the surface so this is uh, uh that little goof up which might you know be a nice hack for some people as well so this is that and the last one is when you flip the direction of one of those scene points so if a scene point has a direction going in the other way if like all of them are clockwise but then this one is counter clockwise this is what happens like it just twists the whole damn thing and it's not right so you have to be very very careful while making lofts and you have to understand that the seams have to be aligned the curves have to be selected in the order in which you want them to be and uh, the directions need to be in either clockwise or counter clockwise but not both uh i'm assuming that you guys don't have any doubts if you have so you have a minute okay let's go ahead and and start making something today uh, we're going to design not design actually we're going to model an existing building uh uh which is the danish pavilion which was made in the uh, 2010 shanghai expo by big architects and we're going to look at the building and then try to model it as is uh as in not exactly as per the dimensions but by understanding what the morphology is and trying to break it down and then build the shape bottom up so when 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 i say bottom up i don't mean that uh, uh like you're going to take a picture of it or the the drawings of it and then you're going to put it on your rhino and then you're going to trace it no no of that stuff so by bottom up i mean you're going to look at the geometry understand how it is how it behaves what shapes are sort of combining together to make that final shape and then try to make it with the tools that we have learned so far uh, we'll be mostly using all the tools that we have learned so far there might be one or two more additions uh, in in that case i'm going to use this building as an example to make you know to to use those tools so uh, 